I've read across this brand that I've never heard of. It's Top Bull, and they have a 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter, and that's what I'm gonna be testing out in this video today. And I'm always looking for good deals or brands that are new to the market that might bring high quality products. So that's why I always like taking on these projects to find out if these new inverters or these new batteries or these new solar panels or these new tools are worth buying. So right off the rip, I feel like this has a good quality to it. They state that this is aircraft aluminum. I don't know what that really means, but it does feel of high quality and it should keep this unit cooler than other materials would. Now the side plates are still uh, like a plastic, but this is definitely a, an aircraft aluminum, I guess. This is a 3000 watt continuous output with a maximum peak power of 6,000 watts. And on the side of the inverter, you have two AC outputs, and we'll definitely be testing those out in just a couple of minutes. We have a Type-C and a regular USB port on the left there. This is our screen, and I'll go over that a little bit more in detail here in a bit as well. Your on and off switch, and this is an on and off switch too. They give you a wire that you can click a button and turn this off kind of remotely. While I'm on the subject of that wire, this is the one that will plug in here and it's like a button. So you can kind of run that uh, away from the unit to have a button where you could turn it on or off. Maybe you have this stored in RV and you need a button like that. The user manual and these fuses. These are 30 amp fuses and you get 12 of them. <laughs> I'm not sure why you need 12 fuses, but it's good to always have extra fuses. And two cables. Now, what I'm about to say is not unique to Top Bull. This is true to every inverter that has ever been sent out to me. So I'm calling out any company that's out there listening to me, please upgrade your cables uh, because I have yet to get an inverter that I trust the cables to. This is your failure point right here uh, on these inverters. So I would always recommend buying high quality cables to hook up to your inverters. Uh, typically the ones that are sent out with the inverter I never use because I just don't trust them. And these, I don't like the fact that you got two that you need to stack on top of one another. That's an automatic uh, no-no for me. And on this side of the inverter, we have the two terminal points that you would hook your wires to and two large fans that help keep this unit cool. Now, something with having two fans like that Typically, you'll have a lot of noise out of the inverter and we will run a sound level test on this to see what type of reading that we get. So that's gonna be interesting to see if they can keep this quiet with two large fans like that. And now for the most important part of the video is to test this inverter and see if it performs like it's supposed to. Now I am gonna use the cables that come with this because that's what's sent out to me. So I wanna use these to see if we can get any uh, temperature reading on these cables. I am going to try to overload this inverter to an extent. I'm going to definitely be running it at 3000 watts and beyond to see if we can get it to shut down or uh, if anything heats up like these wires. Of course, we're going to be um, using this button to see if we can turn on and off the unit with this. Uh, I actually like this a little bit better than what I've seen on other inverters, which is a screen that is like square and it kind of tells you what's going on in the screen. But I like this just because it's cleaner and I think it would be easier to install. And I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but these are dual 10 gauge copper wires. And I'm uncertain if this is pure copper or copper clad aluminum. And if it's copper clad aluminum, I would recommend just tossing these things. I would not use a copper clad aluminum on a system that's gonna be connected inside of an expensive piece of equipment like an RV, a camper, or even a house, or even in a shop like I'm in right here. This is not something you'd wanna do. You don't want to cheap out on your cables, but I can't say for certain if these are pure copper, or if these are copper clad aluminum, but I will show you what I would use if you're gonna buy an additional cable. This cable is a high quality cable, pure copper with 10 coated um, terminal ends on it. Now I won't use this because this is another thing you wanna make sure. Now I'm sure that they have the right size terminals, uh, the hole inside of this that is correct. 
So if we look right there, this one would be too small to use on that. We would not want to drill that out to use it. This is the correct size, maybe. Nope, that was actually a little bit larger than what for those terminals. This I've used for other inverters, like 5,000 watts and higher that I've tested out. And these cables are absolutely great. But we're gonna test these and see if they get hot. And you'll see that I got me a little resistor up here. This is to keep the spark from happening when you tap this to the terminal. So you'll put this on the resistor and you'll touch that to the terminal and then you'll pull that off and you'll touch it and there won't be no spark. Now this is not my recommendation of how you would hook this up. You need to put a lot of uh, safety features in between this and this, but this is to test this inverter out and I can safely do that under these circumstances to where I have full ability to, to take care of this if something happens. Uh, I would prefer to have a switch that I could shut down the power between the two, uh, a couple of fuses that would allow me to blow a fuse rather than burning up the inverter or damaging my battery. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of different things you could put in between this to here to protect the system. And I'm gonna turn the inverter on. We definitely got those fans kicking when you first turn this on. Um, I'm not sure why the fans are turned on because we don't have this under a load of any sort. So hopefully they turn off here shortly. But there's our screen. Now we're gonna get our power cord over here connected so we can turn on and off the unit. Okay, the fans did turn off, so that's good because we wouldn't want those running all the time with no load on that. So that just happens at startup. Let's test this button, see if it works. Maybe gotta turn this off. Yeah, so that switch has to be off to use this. And what better way to test out an inverter then hook up a couple heat guns to it because it's got two outlets here and these heat guns will maximize the output of the inverter at 3000 watts or it should get very close to it. We'll run it for a bit and see if we can get it to shut down. Now, something you're always gonna take into consideration is your BMS that's in your battery. This BMS should be able to handle these two heat guns with no problem. And we'll start off kind of slow. Just turn them on medium. We're pumping out 1300 watts. Now we'll go on and turn this up. Ah, we're running at 2779 watts. <laughs> but that's very close to 3000 watts. We got two heat guns running, which is something you'd probably never do. And we're gonna do this continuously for a little bit and see if we have any problems. I like that it's not bouncing up and down in the watts. Typically on inverters, you'll have that number bounce up and down, and this one is very stable. That is a very good sign. And even running under a load, the fans kicked off, and this is still very cool to the touch. Been running this for about five minutes now, and this is actually starting to impress me. So I like that it's really cool, even back around the fans. We'll take a thermal scan on this in just a little bit, but I do wanna run it for a bit longer. Uh, as far as the inverter goes, it's performing great. Uh, the only downside to this are the wires. And you've seen in that thermal scan that those wires are getting extremely hot. Um, oh yeah, they're, they're nice and <laughs> limp right now. So. That's what I mean by those wires. If this inverter can actually be sent out with better wires, this may be one of the better inverters that I've tested. Although it doesn't have terminal block on the front of it so you can hook it up to a load like center or something like that. With these two outlets uh, to put inside of a, uh, a diesel or a semi truck or an RV or something like that to power maybe uh, microwaves or refrigerators, that would be perfect. But, Let's change the wires on it, please. 
The inverter itself stayed very cool during that test. Now I had this pushing out around 2,800 watts for around 15 minutes, maybe a little bit more than that. And the inverter actually never uh, got hot at all. It actually stayed very cool. And that's a big plus uh, when an inverter is under a large load to be able to stay cool. That will prolong the life of the inverter and protect the components on the inside. And when those fans are kicking, the reading that I'm getting out of this is close to around 70 decibels. Now I'm gonna test out a couple of appliances to see if this can run it individually and even together. We have a 30 inch shop fan here uh, that consumes a little bit of power and a 12 inch miter saw that consumes a lot of power at startup. So I'm gonna turn this on maximum speed and then we're gonna start up the saw. My next set of appliances is this little oven and space heater. So we'll turn this on and then turn the space heater on high. No problem. And after a lot of testing, I would recommend the Top Bull 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter. This inverter did everything that it was supposed to. It didn't fail in any category actually, other than the cables that were sent out with it. And that's not the inverter that is the problem. That's just the wires need to be upgraded, the cables that connect the inverter to the battery. And I've talked enough about that in the video, but the overall recommendation for the inverter is a definite buy. It performed very well. Uh, the downsides of this thing is that it doesn't have a terminal block. So in some cases, people are looking for terminal blocks so you can add more uh, outlets to it. It does only have two outlets uh, for the AC, but that actually is a good thing so you don't overload the inverter constantly and cause damage to it. Now, positives to it is that it's got seven major protections. That's overload protection, uh, under voltage, high temperature, short circuit, leakage, and reverse polarity. So having those protections is a major plus. Uh, not all inverters have protections in place. So that is a good thing. So my overall recommendation is definitely a buy on the 3000 watt top bull inverter.